This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1590, The Absolute Best Way to Parent, Use Your Strengths, by Adina Sokloff of ParentingSimply.com. Hello, everybody. Happy Friday, and welcome back to Optimal Relationships Daily with me, your host and narrator, Greg Audino. Today, I've got another post for the parents out there. Adina Sokloff is going to share her thoughts on why using your strengths is a great means of parenting and how to do it. Plus, I'll have my own commentary at the end, as always. So let's jump in and hear Adina's work as we optimize your life. The Absolute Best Way to Parent Use Your Strengths by Adina Sokloff of ParentingSimply.com Positive psychologists have been studying ways to help people find authentic happiness. Researchers report that, quote, Utilizing one's strengths correlates with greater creativity, productivity, and excellence, all ingredients of professional and career success. On the personal side, maximizing the use of personal strengths yields greater happiness and feelings of well-being. End quote. We can apply this principle to our parenting. According to Jeanette Penley of Mother Styles, the mother who understands her unique strengths will be more comfortable and confident in her parenting abilities. She will be more productive and will be able to better interact with her children and parent more effectively. She and her children will exhibit greater happiness and well-being. Haim Gannat, an eminent psychologist in the 1960s and 70s, addressed this issue of strengths in his parenting classes. One mother was feeling badly because her child had asked her to volunteer to be the class mother, and she told him no. She complained to Dr. Gannat, What's the matter with me? Why can't I be like other mothers? He said firmly, quote, A question like that only confuses. It presupposes that we should feel like other people, but we don't. We're not other people. We are ourselves. You are you. We come back to the same thing again. We can only feel what we feel, and we really feel differently. Each one of us does, not only about being a class mother, but about everything. One mother loves to bake with her children, and another can't stand having them underfoot in the kitchen. One loves gathering the little ones around to read aloud. Another shudders at the thought. We each have our strengths and our limitations. End quote. How do we find our strengths, our uniqueness, our individual style, so that we can parent happily, productively, and effectively? We can simply ask ourselves the following. What do I love to do for my children? What aspect of mothering comes easy to me and energizes me? What are my talents and how do I use them to enhance my relationship with my children? To borrow from Gannat and then get even more specific, do you love to cook with your children or do you like to do your kitchen work alone? Do you love to read to them or does all that sitting make you jittery? Do you love nature and the outdoors or do you shrink from dirt? How about art projects? Can you handle the glue and the paint and the mess or would it drive you nuts? Do you enjoy your children's spontaneous living room performances and playing dress-up? Or are you bored to tears? Are you a thrill-seeker and love taking your kids to amusement parks? Or do you cringe from that very thought? Is it easy for you to drag around your children on shopping trips? Or does it wear you out? There are no right and wrong answers, no judgments here. My very artistic friend spends hours before each holiday with glue, glitter, and googly eyes and can't wait for the next special occasion. I know other moms who hate elaborate arts and crafts projects. They hand their children markers and paper. Not to worry, their children's fine motor skills are well within normal limits. I have one friend who loves to make and decorate birthday cakes with the birthday girl or boy. Another friend who buys all baked goods. None of the children have complained on their special day. I have yet another friend who finds out what the school lunch menu is and loves to explore ways to create similar, extra healthy alternatives so her child can brown bag it. Interestingly enough, in her best friend's house, the husband does all the cooking. Much of it involves noodles and powdered cheese sauce. Last I checked, both families are in good health. There's a woman that I know who takes all eight of her children on road trips at least three times a year. She says she has wanderlust. I know another mom who stays at home during vacation and just lets the kids relax in their pajamas until noon. She's a homebody. All of those children are intelligent and well-adjusted. I always found taking my young children to the supermarket to be an exhausting experience and moved mountains never to step into a grocery store with them. My neighbor takes her children anywhere and everywhere and wouldn't do it any other way. Personal strengths 
are the things that we are naturally good at and give us energy and vitalize us. To increase our joy, contentment, and pleasure in our children and our families, we need to cultivate and build our parenting strengths. Ultimately, it is this simple. The key to our happiness, and ultimately to our children's happiness, is to find what we love about mothering and do more of it. You just listened to the post titled, The Absolute Best Way to Parent, Use Your Strengths, by Adina Sokloff of ParentingSimply.com. Okay, and thanks to Adina for sharing yet another wonderful article of hers with us. I thought this post was wonderful for any parent who might be uh, stretching themselves a bit too thin and trying to do everything for their kids. Remember that this goes beyond the time spent with kids. And playing to your strengths also teaches them a lot about individuality, doesn't it? It exemplifies for them that it is okay to know what you're good at or what you enjoy, and that while we want to be open-minded and flexible, of course, we don't have to do so to such an extent that we're losing touch with who we are or trying too hard to please or be like other people. So, remember that this, as well as any other approach we take in parenting, can be turned into a greater lesson in character for our kids. So, if your approach to parenting is well-intentioned and reflective of how you would like to see them grow up, turn your focus towards that and how to relay to them the underlying message about just being a person. There are always opportunities for that, And within those opportunities are really great chances at connection. Okay, that's going to bring us to the end though, everybody. As always, I appreciate you being here today and listening all the way through. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you again tomorrow, of course, for more ORD. That's where your optimal life awaits.